what's happening all you minties uncanny omar here from near min condition the home of collected editions and join me today for your advanced look at the miles morales omnibus volume one from marvel comics let's get started And welcome back, everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this book. This book is due out in the direct market and book market on November 1st. And speaking of direct market, that is the cover we're looking at here. This is the cover supplied by Sarah Pichelli. On the left-hand side is the standard edition cover, the one that's going to be available everywhere. And that one is supplied by Carrie Andrews. So the cover here on the right, the one that I'm going to be doing an overview of, will be available at places like your local comic book stores, cheapgraphicnovels.com, Walt's Comic Shop, Organic Price Books, In Stock Trades, DCBS, Tales of Wonder, Dying Breed Collectors, Comics Bugle, Reads Comic Shop, and places like that. All right, back to this. So here we have the latest printing of Miles Morales, Spider-Man. No longer Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man as it was branded before, but Spider-Man. So there has been a change in the title. The content is still the same. So I am going to be comparing it to the previous edition. This is the second printing. The first printing uh, that was printed at the Donnelly printer, this one also at the Donnelly printer, had bad binding. It was known for the glue, the book glue to come off of the spine, and you could fix it. And maybe I need to work on a video on how to fix these books if it comes apart. Because some of them are fixable. Uh, and then, of course, there are some cosmetic fixes, too. But what I was going to say is that the first one was notorious for having bad binding, much like Captain America by Mark Wade or the 52 Omnibus, the first printing. But the second printing, this one here, fixed all those issues. And it was printed at the Donnelly printer. This one is printed at the iMac printer. So we are going to be comparing some of the artwork in here to check out what both printers did. And... Miles Morales Spider-Man, Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man, and the creators here in full name, Brian Michael Bendis, Sarah Kelly, David Marquez, and Justin Ponser. Over here is just their last names. Down here we have Miles in his costume, and here he is unmasked. Volume 1 this time around, though, which is why they probably rebranded the uh, book. Hey, that's what became our direct market cover here. Here's what the back of the book looks like. And this has changed some too. Actually, this has changed a lot. The content is now found down here, where it previously was found here. ISBN down here, $125, still the same price, rated T. Uh, the actual quote here from Paste Magazine is up here. And a Spider-Man for the 21st century. Can I give you a little bit of a breakdown as to what you're going to find in here? The wording is all the same, just different font. Underneath the dust jacket... It's the same image. It's this iconic image of Miles versus the Green Goblin. That one right there. Now, I've done an overview of this a couple of years ago when this first came out. Uh, but I am going to be talking about this book here this time around. And then, like I said, doing our comparison in a little bit. But what I was going to say is that in order to talk about this book and to kind of give you the premise, I'm gonna to have to talk a little bit about the Ultimate Universe and what it is, what differs Ultimate Spider-Man from the 616 Spider-Man, and of course, a little bit as to what happened to Ultimate Peter Parker that made them get a new Spider-Man in the Ultimate Universe. Not gonna go into details as to how things happen, but I do like to give people just a small warning if I am even talking about small spoilers, because I don't wanna ruin that adventure for you if you're reading Ultimate Spider-Man for the first time even though one of the Omnis is literally a huge spoiler. But maybe when they reprint it, it won't be. All right, let's crack this open, take a look at the art, and talk about the stories in here. All right, cracking this book open. Here's your end paper. Miles Morales Spider-Man instead of Miles Morales The Ultimate Spider-Man. That was in the previous two volumes, the previous two printings. Miles Morales Spider-Man there again. Written by Brian Michael Bendis. Here's your credits. This is where you're going to find your artists, your pencilers, your inkers, your colorists, your finishers, uh, your cover artists. Now, finishers, of course, doing more work than just actually inking, actually finishing the layouts. So kicking it off with Ultimate Spider-Man number one. So this does contain Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 28, 16.1. Miles Morales, Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 12. 
uh, material from Ultimate Fallout number four. It also collects Spider-Man, the five-issue miniseries, Cataclysm, Ultimate Spider-Man, the three-issue mini, and Ultimate Spider-Man 200 when it went back to the legacy number before relaunching the title. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some spoilers here, or minor spoilers for the world of Ultimate Spider-Man. So Ultimate Spider-Man, in case you're new to the channel, in case you're new to comics, is another universe. It's not the 616 universe. It's not the universe of Peter Parker that started in 1961. It's not that character that we've been following since 1961. Around the year 2000, uh, Brian Michael Bendis was tasked to reignite a new universe and kicking it off with Spider-Man. So it's kind of modernizing the world of Marvel and also making it a little more realistic, making the characters more realistic, not just modernizing them. And that's what this world is. Now, this is a little bit of the spoiler part. In the previous volume, before this started, uh, Peter Parker is taken out of commission. How he is taken out of commission, ultimate Peter Parker, again, not the 616 Peter Parker. Um, I don't, <laughs> don't want to go into detail as to how he's taken out of commission, but he is no more. And you can take that as you will. You were warned about some spoilers, but even the title of one of the Omnis that precedes this one is a huge spoiler. So that sets up a new character, a new Ultimate Spider-Man. So we meet this young man in the very first issue. This is Miles Morales. And this is his uncle. This is Aaron Davis. Now, Aaron Davis in the Ultimate Universe is the Prowler. He's a villain. And you can tell by the way that he talks and acts, he hasn't been a good guy for a long time. Now, he stole some things that does not belong to him, that actually belongs to Oscorp. And one of these things that he had, I had no idea was in there, is this spider. Now, this spider came out and bit Miles Morales. Now, in the Ultimate Universe and in the 616 Universe, that's how Peter Parker became Spider-Man. He got bit by a radioactive spider. In the Ultimate Universe, it was a trip to Oscorp. Now, in here, it's very similar to what it did to Peter Parker. It gives him enhanced abilities, and it gives him new abilities that has not been shown in the Ultimate Universe before. Like, he can have camouflage. He doesn't have organic webbing, though. Uh, but he does have enhanced speed, enhanced strength, and all the things that made Spider-Man Spider-Man. However, he's a kid. So, he's not a martial artist. He's not a secret agent. So he doesn't really want to be a superhero. Now, this is his friend right here. This is his best friend. This is Genki. Now, if you've seen the uh, Spider-Man, uh, the oh my gosh, I almost said Tobey Maguire, but no, uh, the Tom Holland movies, the Far From Home, Homecoming, and uh, No Way Home, Genki is kind of like the character there of Ned Leeds. Of course, Ned is in the 616 universe is a lot older. He's not a kid. He's not a friend of Peter Parker. He's kind of a rival in the Daily Bugle. But anyway, in this universe, his best friend. Now, Miles has a normal family. He, uh, he has a father and a, and a mom. And they all get along. I mean, it's a good family dynamic between all these characters. Uh, the only one that's kind of the black sheep is, of course, his uncle. Now, I... I went on record in saying that I really enjoyed this. I thought this was such a fun story. I read this omnibus in one day. We were doing an old reader, new reader, and I hadn't finished the stories in years. So I'm like, all right, let's 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 check out the stories. And I finished it in one day because I couldn't put it down. I read it cover to cover because it was just fun to learn about a new Spider-Man. And, and and Bendis was really good at writing kids. Um, and. You know, he got a little bit of a backlash in the from the Ultimate fans for replacing Peter Parker with this character. And not because he's an African-American character. He's actually African-American Latino. My man. But because he was just a young punk kid that didn't know how to fight. He didn't know anything. So that's kind of why he did the Spider-Man uh, crossover event, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But it is a beautiful story about how this kid is trying to find himself. And now one of the things he does is he puts on a Spider-Man costume that he bought at a Halloween shop, him and Genki. And people are saying, hey, man, even though you fought that one villain, maybe you shouldn't be wearing that costume. You know, it's in poor taste. And he's like, maybe the costume is in bad taste. This is, of course, from Ultimate Fallout 4, but I love the way that they placed it here. 
in this particular issue of Ultimate Spider-Man number four. Now he gets visited by this young lady here. This is Jessica Drew, who in this universe is a, well, I'll just say she's related to Peter Parker, and I'll leave it at that. But she is working for S.H.I.E.L.D., much like the Jessica Drew in the 616 universe. So these are his early adventures. This is him trying to become this hero that he was born to be. He's already a good person because he has great parents, but just doesn't have the training. And that's what I loved about this. You know, I mean, it gives it a realistic touch. And of course, he needs his own identity because he's not Ultimate Peter Parker. He's not Ultimate Spider-Man. So Nick Fury, who kind of is the reason why we even have a Spider-Man in the Ultimate Universe, and you can find out why by reading the Ultimates Omnibus, which is being reprinted later this month, uh, or in November, rather. But he gets his own costume. I love this costume. I love, love, love that costume. I think it's such a cool costume. It really stands out. Here's some Chris Samney artwork here. So he does uh, get to fight his, you know, his predecessor's villains, but he gets a new villain. This is the Scorpion. Now, we've seen the Scorpion in the... Uh, Ultimate Universe before, but he's a different Scorpion. That one also related to Peter Parker, and you can find out how uh, by reading those books. Uh, they're not in omnibus format yet, but this one here is an actual Mexican crime lord that he actually, Aaron, his uncle, the Prowler, owes him money. So that's kind of, it all ties together, and he's manipulating um, Miles into helping him. But it's so cool because at the end of the day, you know, he's still family. That's still his nephew. So he's teaching him how to fight. He's teaching him how to dodge. It's really cool. It's almost like the Piccolo and Son Gohan dynamic after Goku and Raditz, you know, and Goku took off. But anyway, it's kind of like that, except for the fact that Eren is very selfish and he just wants uh, Miles to help him take down the Scorpion at the end of the day. And of course, that's, that has some um, horrible ramifications that forever last in Miles' life. Then we get Captain America jumping in here. There's a crossover with Divided We Fall and United We Stand. That's all collected in here. And this is the Spider-Man crossover. And I think this is the crossover, or not crossover, I'm sorry. It was a miniseries. This is what pretty much Brian Michael Bendis said. You know what? This is how I'm going to prove to the haters that this is the ultimate Spider-Man. This is the new Spider-Man. There's nothing that um, they're going to do about it. So what happens in this is that R616 Spider-Man, the one I was talking about, the one that kicked off in 1961 with Amazing Fantasy 15, came over because of Mysterio accidentally sending him by shooting, trying to shoot him, but it shot one of his machines, sent him into this Ultimate Universe. So this is the first time a 616 character had appeared in the Ultimate Universe. We knew it was going to happen. At the beginning of the Ultimate Universe, we knew it was going to happen one day. And Joe Quesada denied it. He's like, there's never going to be a time when these characters collide. Never going to happen. It stands on its own. Well, here we have Spider-Man. There was another one that's collected in the second volume, which I'll do an overview of later. But in this, it's pretty much both of them teaming up. I, I think this had a, a really, really good, powerful moment with Peter when he goes and, you know, when he finds out where the Peter Parker in the Ultimate Universe is, so he goes and visits somebody. And I thought that moment was really beautiful and well-written and just powerfully drawn by Sarah Pichelli. But that's a five-issue miniseries, and then we get this story arc with The Return of Venom, also drawn by Sarah Pichelli. This one here showing us pretty much the curse of being Spider-Man. And you can find out what I mean by that later on. So much so that... He gives up being Spider-Man. Like, it fast-forwards a year, and he's like, I don't want to be Spider-Man anymore. It just costs so much, and it hurts too much. Here's what, uh, the character of Bombshell. She first appears here. And we have Cloak and Dagger through this particular storyline that kind of reignites his passion for becoming a superhero. And then we get this issue right here. This is the Legacy Issue 200. So they went back to the numbering system of Issue 200. This one is drawn by several creators, including Mark Bagley coming back, who... Launched the Ultimate Spider-Man line with Brian Michael Bendis, Stuart Eminem, Mark Brooks drawing some beautiful stuff. And I'm going to actually fast forward a little bit here. I don't want to spoil this for anybody. Uh, this here is the fight with the Green Goblin. And that all leads into the last story arc in here, 
which has Doctor Doom and a bunch of other characters coming in. But the big thing about this is that this ends, this book ends right where Secret Wars begins. As a matter of fact, the ending of this book, you can find out for yourself how it ends. It states, Miles Morales shows up in Secret Wars. And Secret Wars is where Marvel took the opportunity. This is the 2015 Secret Wars, by the way, not the original series from the uh, 1984. But where Marvel took the opportunity to say, okay, the cells of the Ultimate Universe aren't as good as they used to be. As a matter of fact, they're kind of bogging ourselves down. Let's go ahead and merge the best characters. And we'll have an Ultimates comic and we'll have an Ultimate Spider-Man comic. And that will be in the second volume, in the second omnibus of this. But that's it for this one. Let's look at the extras here. We have the variant covers all the way in the back. Some of the variants are collected in between the chapters too. Like the variants for Spider-Men, those are collected in between the chapters. I couldn't show one variant because it spoils something. But my gosh, there is a lot of variants here. I remember when this was coming out, we didn't know who the new Ultimate Spider-Man was going to be. So Ultimate All Out 4 is the introduction of the character. Here's some original artwork by Sarah Pichelli, David Marquez. And then the Ultimate Spider-Man gal cover gallery right there, leading up to 200. The I think this is from, yeah, Ultimate Spider-Man 200 before it came over to the 616 universe. All right, let's look at the binding and then we'll compare some of the art with the second printing. 1168 pages, and that's what the eye looks like. It is sewn binding. This one printed at the iMac printer. Um, so I did see some art bleeding through from the opposite side. It shows up more, of course, when you have whites like this. You can see some of the word bubbles from the other side. And of course, everybody's, <laughs> you know, reading lights are different. So some people may not notice. And honestly, some people don't care. They always ask why I pointed out. I pointed out for the people that do care. That's why I pointed out. You can see some of the frames coming from the opposite page. Uh, so let me do a comparison really quick. I wanted to mainly focus on the frames up here because this has whites like here. And honestly, the Donnelly printer paper, just a slight bit thicker than the paper at the iMac printer. So you could still see a little bit of the frames coming in from the opposite page, but not as much as here. I know it's like barely a difference at all, but I did want to point that out. For example, up here on this frame, you can tell more of the word bubble here than you can over here at the Donnelly printer paper. Swear it's not nitpicking. Some people actually care about this stuff. So that's why I try to be as thorough as possible when doing overviews so you know what you are getting. Uh, I, I did want to do a color comparison though. And this is barely noticeable, but on the older printing, it does look like the colors are just a little more vibrant than the iMac printer colors that they're using. And that's not just for covers, it's for the internal pages too. Just a little bit, you can barely tell the difference here. And one more comparison this time around is the way the spread pages look. The original or second printing up at the top and the new printing at the bottom. Uh, the binding on the original or the second printing is just a little bit better. So you don't get as much gutter loss like you do in the new printing. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. That was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up for the very first time, you've never read it. Uh, if you have the original printing or the second printing and you couldn't help yourself because you saw the different covers or you saw that it was rebranded as Miles Morales Spider-Man, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.